Hi, good morning. My name is Akanksha Pitya. I am an international medical graduate from India. And uh, uh, I'm working here since like two weeks now. And uh, my topic for the presentation is multiple sclerosis. Uh, thank you, Dr. Stein, for giving me this opportunity to present. And I would like to thank Dr. Bernard for having me uh, uh, under his guidance. Uh, I, I'm going to begin uh, under the following outlines, and uh, that includes introduction, incidence, the etiology and risk factors, symptoms. Then I'm going to present a small case on the same along with the examination. Then we'll proceed to the diagnosis, differential diagnosis, management, prognosis. And uh, uh, I actually took a little bit of data from uh, a few studies. So I thought to, uh, you know, uh, take a little bit of references from the studies so that uh, the data sounds a little bit relevant to us. Okay, what is multiple sclerosis? It is also known as encephalomyelitis disseminata. It is the most common chronic inflammatory demyelinating and neurodegenerative disease of the central nervous system in young adults. This disease is a heterogeneous, multifactorial, immune-mediated disease that is influenced by both genetic and environmental factors. Uh, the name itself refers to numerous scars that develop on the white matter of the brain and the spinal cord. There are four types of variants uh, in multiple sclerosis. One is a clinically isolated syndrome. A second one is a relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. The third is a primary progressive multiple sclerosis. And the fourth one is a secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Here are the types of multiple sclerosis. Uh, number one is uh, clinically isolated. There is steady decline with the onset uh, with the attacks in clinically isolated. Then there is a secondary progressive in which initial relapsing multiple sclerosis suddenly begins to decline without any periods of remission. Then uh, we have primary progressive in which uh, there is steady increase, like exponential increase in uh, disability without any attacks. Relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. The, in this particular type of multiple sclerosis, there are unpredictable uh, attacks which may or may not leave uh, permanent deficits followed by periods of remissions. The graph beautifully depicts the uh, types and clinical variants of multiple sclerosis. I think you should all should have a look on the graphs to see the progression of uh, whether which type of multiple sclerosis it is because each individual patient presents with different symptoms and signs. So you have to differentiate between primary, secondary, then uh, whether it is progressive, whether it is relapsing or it, it is just an isolated syndrome. I'd like to proceed with the incidence of multiple sclerosis. It is usually occurs in 20 to 40 years of age. Women, uh, they are more affected than men. Whites are more affected than Hispanics, Blacks, and Asians. Here is a graph that actually deposits uh, 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 the age uh, factors in which you can uh, definitely see that females are more affected than males and the incidence is more between 35 to 54 years of age. Uh, then multiple sclerosis uh, distribution by countries. Canada has the highest prevalence that might be due to high sensitivity and specificity of the test they are determining, or there might be a population that is more aware, or the number of uh, individuals that are presenting uh, very early in the disease are high. The, uh, there might be multiple reasons because uh, uh, there, there are more white people living in Canada, but yeah, Canada has the highest prevalence of multiple sclerosis followed by San Marino and Denmark. Uh, now, the etiology and risk factors, the exact cause of this disease is unknown, but most of the studies, they suggest that it is an autoimmune disease. Uh, the, there are multiple risk factors, but I would still consider age as the most common factor followed by other autoimmune diseases. Then obesity, sex, female more than male, fam uh, family history, certain infections like Epstein-Barr virus, measles, mumps, rubella, uh, HIV, they trigger the episodes of multiple sclerosis. Stress and fatigue definitely triggers pregnancy, any physical injury, climate. As I told that Canada has the highest incidence uh, prevalence of multiple sclerosis because of more colder climate. So here are, uh, is a beautiful de uh, demonstration of all the symptoms together of multiple sclerosis. I tried to concise it in a particular image so that it would be more uh, beautifully uh, visible to everybody. Uh, first, there are central symptoms, then there are peripheral symptoms. We'll proceed first with the central symptoms. That includes fatigue, cognitive impairment, then uh, uh, psychiatric symptoms like depression and anxiety, unstable mood. 
then the visual symptoms they are usually the most prominent symptoms especially the optic neuritis uh, it is uh, pro pro usually the only symptom that you uh, that presents in most of the clinically isolated cases of multiple sclerosis followed by nystagmus and diplopia then we have speech dysarthria uh, then dysphagia in the throat we have uh, several musculoskeletal symptoms like weakness spasms ataxia then uh, there, there are sensory uh, mode, uh, symptoms like pain, hypoesthesias, and paresthesias. Uh, there is urinary incontinence, or there might be bladder symptoms like diarrhea or constipation. Also, uh, there might be fre frequency or uh, retention of the urine, uh, and uh, the patient usually asks for one or other symptomatic treatment for all these symptoms. Uh, I would like to proceed, uh, proceed with the, uh, the case presentation of multiple sclerosis. Uh, we have a white woman in her 35s. She visited the neurological clinic to have her ongoing neurological problems evaluated. Uh, this is how the patient describes her problem over a prolonged period of time. She has been aware of certain substantial changes in her neurological abilities, specifically heat intolerance. This, is ca this caused a stumbling gait and an inclination to trip. Her visual acuity also varied, varied over a period of time. The patient was working quite hard and under a lot of stress for the past two months. She developed flu, which made her neurological condition worse. She was severely exhausted at the moment, unable to grasp anything in her hands, and she had noticeable tremors. She also experienced frequent terrible falls. She had arthralgias ever since, first on her right side, then followed on, by, uh, on the left side. After several de days of employment, the patient then suddenly experienced a right hemisensory deficiency. The uh, sensory de motor deficits are more in um, multiple sclerosis than the, uh, the motor symptoms. At that time, an MRI scan was conducted and the results showed areas of elevated T2 signal in both the cerebral uh, hemisphere, indicating multifocal white matter illnesses. A spinal tap was also performed, and the results shows that CSF contained oligoclonal bands. This is particularly very specific about multiple sclerosis that um, the CSF, they have multiple varying degrees of the oligoclonal ba bands, and it, it is usually have a sensitivity of 90% and a specificity of 85%. Testing for the visual evoked re response revealed abnormalities due to optic nerve sluggish, sluggish conduction. Uh, continuing the case presentation, the patient is currently dealing with a number of issues connected to her illness, including continuous weakness, numbness on her right side, decreased bladder function, which demands multiple morning voids and three nocturias. She lost her bladder control and now she's required to wear a pad during the day. She's also chronically exhausted, has gait abnormalities, balance issues, and experiences some spinning in her head. Uh, I'd like to continue with the uh, reviewing of her systems as the patient has predisposition to aspirate both liquids and solids because of multiple sclerosis ca usually causes dysphagia, uh, which uh, when become uh, severe, it causes uh, aspiration symptoms. But this is usually in the later stages of the disease when the disease is more severe and it is like relapsing rem remitting time or secondary progressive time. She complains of continuous tinnitus associated with hearing loss, which is more visible on the left side. She also has decreased hand movements and the bilateral hand weaknesses, and she complains of short-term memory loss, and she's quite irritable because of her disease. Uh, this is her family and personal history. I think smoking is a relevant factor uh, uh, in the development and progression of her disease. Um, she do not drink a lot, but uh, yeah, she has a few more uh, history of hypertension and heart disease in her immediate family. She is anemic and is allergic to hives. Okay, uh, now proceeding towards a neurological examination of this case, uh, I proceed, start with the cranial examination followed by the motor and then sensory and DTRs. Uh, while examining the cranial nerve to the disc are sharp and of normal color, fundoscopic examination is particularly normal in this woman. Usually when the uh, episodes of optic neuritis develops, the fundoscopic e examination reveals a few spots uh, on the posterior side of the retina. Now cranial nerves three, four, and six. There, uh, there are no obstructive ocular movements that are difficult or difficulties with smooth pursuit or saccades are seen. Remainder of the cranial examination uh, is normal except for decreased hearing on the left side, numbness in the right side of the face, which extends down in the entire side of the face. 
The Weber test reveals greater conductance to the right, and the Renish test reveals ear greater than bone conduction bilaterally. This reveals uh, a left side sensitive neur neural hearing loss. The palate elevates well, swallow, uh, swallowing appears to be intact. Tongue movements are slowed, but tongue, tongue power appears to be intact. Now, proceeding towards a motor examination, uh, the, the, there is relatively normal strength in our upper extremities throughout. However, rapid alternating movements that are decreased in both the upper extremities. And the patient has dysdogokinesia in the left hand. Mild paraparesis is noted in both the legs with severe spasticity. DTRs are two plus and symmetrical in both the arms and three plus at ankles and at knees. Bilateral extensor toe sign are present. Sensory examination reveals paresthesia on the right to touch and decreased pin sensation on the right diffusely. The patient had mild vibratory sense loss in the distal extremities. The rhombic signs is, uh, is positive and tendon gait is mildly unstable. She had gait abnormalities when uh, she revealed her symptoms. So accordingly, uh, uh, while I was taking the history, uh, history and doing all the examination stuff, uh, we, we, uh, th there was a suspected diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Uh, then what are the diagnostics that we, we are going to perform if you find a patient with multiple sclerosis? It is typically diagnosed based on presenting signs and symptoms in combination with supporting medical imagining and laboratory testing. MRI of the brain and spine with contrast revealed uh, areas of demyelination uh, and on lumbar puncture, oligoclonal ba bands of IgG on electrophoresis, which are inflammatory markers, is present in 70 to 80% of MS. Brain atrophy is an indicator, but it usually develops only in the later stages of the disease. Evoked potentials of the optic uh, pathways and auditory system to assess the presence of slowed nerve conduction was conducted, and the nerve conduction was slow. Uh, see, as you can see, the brain imaging, uh, uh, this is the picture that I took from a source, and uh, there are multiple areas of um, uh, white meter demyelination in this MRI. Uh, I think you should clearly visualize the picture uh, where, where there are multiple areas in the white matter, the scattered areas. This is another uh, beautiful image of multiple sclerosis, but this is contrast enhanced. So uh, uh, as you can see nearby the ventricles, there, there, there is enhancement of the contrast in the white matter. multiple focal uh, deficits because on both the sides of the brain, especially uh, the, the areas are so symmetrically distributed on both the sides and uh, the white matter lesions are more uh, evident on this particular brain scan. These are the oligoclonal bands that we discussed uh, in multiple sclerosis that the normal bands uh, are, are usually uh, 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 you see uh, distributed uh, so beautifully and uh, symmetrically. But in the abnormal bands, the uh, CSF uh, has more findings of, uh, you, you see the uh, more darker findings of the uh, contrast when uh, you start the lumbar puncture testing. So uh, these, are, these are the oligoclonal bands. Then uh, the differential diagnosis is particularly important since uh, not only in neurology, but in all uh, uh, the specialties that you might have to have a lot of symptoms and signs that are similar to the other disease. And especially when the patient has a lot of multiple other illnesses and symptoms of other diseases that are not relevant to neurology, but to some other um, uh, speciality. So here are the differential diagnosis, neuromyelitis optic spectrum disorder, neurosarcoidosis, paraneoplastic disorders, systemic rheumatological diseases, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, CNS vasculitis, CNS infections, leukodystrophies, CNS lymphoma, Bachelet's disease, vitamin B12 deficiency, copper deficiency, and mitochondrial diseases. You have to particularly examine the patient so, so uh, properly and in a manner that you do not miss a symptom of uh, disease or you do not confuse it with the symptom of some other disease. Uh, now uh, proceeding towards the management of multiple sclerosis, it's a very huge topic. I'm just trying to concise it to uh, a very small topic so that uh, the learning gets easy. So uh, first we'll proceed uh, with the symptomatic management. 
the symptomatic management includes uh, if the patient is presenting with a bladder dysfunction, you can give the patient oxybutynin or propenthalin. Constipation for constipation, you can uh, uh, prescribe psyllium or laxatives. For more fatigability, amantadine or modafinil are uh, first line drugs. For spasticity, we usually give baclofen, but if the patient is not tolerating baclofen, we can give dentorolene to the patient. To control the tremors, propanolol is usually prescribed, but yeah, there are alternatives like phenobarbital and clonazepam. For trisomanal neurology or due to multiple sclerosis, uh, carbamazepine is uh, the first line of drug. Uh, followed by phenytoin and amitriptyline. For dysthesia, transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation is another therapy. Also, the patient is recommended to go for exercise, activity, physical therapies, and speech therapies to keep herself active because activity decreases the relapses of the disease as per some studies. Surgical management includes deep brain stimulation or implantation of a drug catheter to give drugs if the patient is severely dysphagic or can, uh, cannot tolerate the drugs. Management. Although there is no cure for uh, multiple sclerosis, there are several therapies that has been proven helpful, especially during the acute attacks. Uh, during the acute attacks, the patient is usually uh, prescribed with IV corticosteroids such as methylprednisolone. If the um, acute attack is still not controllable by steroids, we proceed with more uh, severe therapies or uh, especially in the severe kinds of attack, we give azathioprine and cyclophosphamide. Uh, now, disease-modifying agents. These modifying agents are usually prescribed when the patient has moderate to severe uh, multiple sclerosis with re uh, relapsing symptoms or some kind of symptoms that, she, uh, that are intolerable. Also, this uh, disease-modifying treatments decreases the pro progression of the disease. So the relapsing remitting type of multiple sclerosis, interferon beta-1 and interferon beta-1b, uh, beta uh, has proven to be very effective, followed by glatormir acetate. Um, then we have some monoclonal antibodies like uh, ilm Natalizumab and Fingolimod. For progressive multiple sclerosis, Midoxentron, Siponimod, and Cladribine has been shown to be effective. Uh, proceeding towards the prognosis of multiple sclerosis, it depends on the subtype and the variant of the disease. And also there is an individual progression of the disease. Uh, there is a huge variation from patient to patient. Spinal cord lesions, abnormalities on MRI, and more brain atrophy are predictive of a worse disease, though brain atrophy is a predictor of the disease course is still experimental. The progression of multiple, progressive multiple sclerosis is worse with faster accumulation of disability, though the rate of decline varies considerably between the people. This is a, a very beautiful image how the uh, expanded disability status scale uh, has quant quantified the disability in multiple sclerosis and uh, they have monitored the changes over time. And it is uh, usually not very uh, uh, prognostic while examining a patient, but uh, in the clinical trials and while uh, assess assessing the final prognosis or, you know, when uh, usually when a patient is diagnosed, they would definitely ask you what is the prognosis or how, how difficult is it going to get in time or how, how am I going to manage my disease with time? There are uh, relative a lot of questions that patient has uh, while being diagnosed with a chronic condition and disabilitating condition like multiple sclerosis. So with one with no disability and minimal signs to 10 being dead by multiple sclerosis, the scale uh, precisely great uh, the, uh, the uh, signs and symptoms of the patient and relating them with the prognosis of the patient. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a poem that I'm actually a writer, so uh, my presentation ends here, but this is something that I uh, wrote while I was actually reading about multiple sclerosis, uh, reviewing my presentation. And uh, 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 I would like to share it with everybody. So, I lay down silent and quiet. I know there is a crucial fight in my brain and it's not the light. Abruptly, my plagues in the neurons, they desire disrespecting day and night. And here I crash stiff and tight. They say my eyes, bladder, senses are uncontrolled and I mentally freeze. Sometimes I lose my moments, I feel like lifeless. If this was my fate with which I was sent, I would have probably asked for the end. But the irony here is 
it does not stop here well. I incinerated my already barren soul. I cannot cry, cannot beg, and cannot be in a monastery. Uh, I wish I was not cursed with a diseased mess, which they called multiple sclerosis. I wish something had controlled the episode so that the progression is slowed. I wish no one should have to travel such a road leading to defenseless and hopeless death abort. This is like a very precise uh, thing that I understood while uh, uh, seeing a lot of patients in the neurologic clinic. And uh, I just tried to concise it with my words. I hope you uh, liked it. And I hope you guys liked my presentation. These are my references where I took the material from. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, do, uh, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer those questions, please. Any questions? Okay, we'll stop.